Shalom everyone. Blessings on you. Grace and peace be unto you. Do you know that every time I come to do um, a session, I say that grace and peace be unto you. It's my prayer for you that grace and peace will be yours in abundance. It's my prayer for you always that the shalom of God will fill your hearts to overflow where you will not experience any lack amen where the shalom of god will fill your heart with peace and it is always my prayer for you um if you look back into the writings of the apostle paul for most of the letters he wrote he began by saying Peace be unto you. Grace and peace be unto you. It is my blessings over you today. I'm glad that you're able to join with us again as we come to share the word of the Lord. Um, today is, I, I'm excited about this session that I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to ask you as you come on, as you listen, remember if you have not yet um, subscribed to this channel, please do so and you only subscribe one time remember to like the channel and if you feel like leaving a comment it is welcoming if you have questions also please reach out and um i'm sure those questions can be answered a young lady said to me recently you know i have been listening to the teachings and i'm just so blessed by them but there are times when some things I need a little bit more clarification on and can I reach out to you and of course yes you can always reach out you know for prior yes for counseling for clarification any matter on any matter right you can reach out I believe the spirit of the Lord will always give the anointing right for us to, to, to teach us how to respond so today I am so happy to be back with you. I'm Apostle Claudia Morgan Sr. And I know you're going to be blessed by this session today. I have titled this session, The Eighth Day Miracle. The miracle that lasted for eight days. We're going to be talking about that. But before I get into that, I want to share a dream the Lord gave me about three weeks back. And in this dream, I think the time is right for me to be sharing this, right? And in this dream, um, I want you to know, people of God, those of you who have been watching these um, sessions, I am praying for you. Actually, the Lord have me going through a time of intercession on the behalf of people, right? I had this dream. I entered into a room that was full of people and when I looked I saw that cobweb surrounded the people the people were surrounded by cobweb and they didn't even realize that they were surrounded by cobwebs but a lady entered from another direction and when she saw me she kind of grabbed onto me and she said ah pray over the people pray over the people pray over the people and as I opened my mouth I began saying, the spirit of the Lord says the heart of the people. And at that point, I saw the cobweb began getting um, thicker and blacker. It was kind of like manifesting. It was manifesting. And at that point, I couldn't say any, it's like I couldn't continue what the spirit, what I, the spirit of the Lord was saying. I began to weep because of what I was seeing in that dream. And so today I want you to know, I want you to know that God is aware of all the situations that you are going through in your life, right? I want you to know that somebody is praying. When you're not able to pray over yourself, somebody is praying because he's going to give a revelation to somebody to pray over his people. I want you to know that he is breaking the chains of darkness from around your lives. I want you to know that he is removing hopelessness and the limitation that the enemy has placed over your lives. He is removing also scales of religion that has bounded many persons, right? 
He is doing that in this season. And I believe that today's teaching is going to be helpful to you. You are going to learn so much from this. And I just pray that the spirit of God, the Ruach, will just open up your understanding and that you will be ready to receive that which God is saying to us all in this time and in this season. Right, so today I want to share with you on a special event that is coming up on Sunday, December 18th at sunset. It's an eighth day celebration. It continues down to Monday, December 26th. And it is called the Feast of Hanukkah, right? It's an eighth day celebration. It's a celebration that recorded um, the history of supernatural miracles. It recorded the, the miracles of light, of victory and triumph over the enemy, of victory and triumph over God's people. And we are here to share this powerful information with you and not only that but to celebrate i want to tell you something about numbers numbers are powerful if you look on it from the hebrew hebrew con, um, perspective or context the number eight speaks to new beginning you are about entering into a new season of your life you are about entering into a new beginning right? You are about entering into a new place in your walk and in your relationship with the Lord. You are about entering and about to experience the manifold blessings of God in ways that you have never, never, never experienced before. Let us talk about what we're going to be doing today, right? So I'm going to be reading from St. John chapter 10 verse 22 to 24 only those four verses it says then came the feast of dedication at jerusalem it was winter and jesus was in the temple area walking in solomon's colonnade the jews gathered around him saying how long will you keep us in suspense if you are the christ tell us plainly so we see that um, Jesus, Yeshua, and you would have heard me using the name Yeshua in most of the teachings. Why? Yeshua is his real name. It's his Hebrew name. And he was at this special event, right? The Feast of Dedication, as we read here, says it was winter, right? And uh, the word dedication in the text actually means Hanukkah. Right, So the Feast of Hanukkah is really the Feast of Dedication, or the Feast of Dedication is the Feast of Hanukkah. And this is one reason I love to study from the Jewish background. We learn a whole lot. Scripture makes sense, right? It's like it just come alive and makes sense because we're learning the history of the Messiah we are following. So Hanukkah is not mentioned in the Hebrew scripture because the story of Hanukkah happened after the last book of the Tanakh, right? The, the, it, it, yes, it, it happened after the, what are the Tanakh or the Old Testament scripture or the Hebrew scripture was written. However, Hanukkah, as we read, is in the New Testament and Yeshua is here in the temple for this great feast of celebration. So given the fact that Yeshua himself celebrated this feast, it is not one of the regular feasts that we learn about in the book of Leviticus chapter 23, right? Talk about Passover and all of these. If you have been listening to, to these sessions, to these teachings, you would have heard me, I mean, taught on those before and what i do know is that people would normally say as we talk about those feast days that those were jewish feast days and belong to the jews and all this but here we are this is a, a feast that was not recorded in the torah but yeshua himself was celebrating among his people and so the point is 
should believers in the Messiah who are not Jewish celebrate or have knowledge of this day? I feel today I want to share with you on some of the reasons why you want to consider celebrating or at the very least have knowledge. Knowledge is power, right? So let's talk about it. And we're going to go to the to look at the historical background to this event. Hanukkah is history, historically a Jewish festival. It tells and remember that Messiah is Jew. He is a Jew. We serve a Jewish Messiah. Um, on the day of crucifixion, we saw the thing that was put over his head, hail him king. He is king of the Jews and we expect his return. Right in his second coming, he is coming back as that same king. So it tells the story, Hanukkah tells the story of a religious persecution and how the Jewish people stood up for their faith. They stood up for their faith, and it tells how God brought them victory and triumph. Why? Because they were willing to stand. They were willing to stand against the forces of darkness. They were willing to stand against everything that was anti-God. They were willing to stand for the very covenant that was that God established with them. All right. So Jewish in this history, we're going to learn that about a, a, a king by the name of Antiochus. Right. Antiochus IV, they said he was the most cruel king of all times, um, Antiochus Epiphanes, and that means God manifest, right? They said he was the most cruel king of all the kings, and he ruled during 175 to 164 BC. He systemat systematically tried to replace Jewish faith and culture with Greek, he was determined to destroy the Jewish people through assimilation. He prevented the people from practicing their religion in that he, he kept them from keeping Shabbat, feast days, circumcision, the dietary laws, the things that were very, um, very dear to their hearts, the things that they embraced, the things that God gave to them as you know, part of this covenant. And so we see, we learned that he stopped the temple ritual. He ordered the burning of the Torah. The Torah is God's word given to Israel. He set up his own gods in the temple. He offered a sacrificial pig. Can you imagine? I mean, the Torah spoke about eating this kind of animal. And that was what he sacrificed on the altar. He poured the, the blood of the pig over the Torah. Wow, all of these things were happening in the temple, right? And if you read Daniel chapter 11, we would see that it was actually prophesied in Daniel chapter 11. He went further, he erected shrines and altars throughout the land. He forced the people to offer sacrifices as tokens of their acceptance of the new religion. And those who, yes, of course, there were persons who were willing to support this new move. And then there were persons who disobeyed. And those who disobeyed were either tortured or killed. This is history. This is real history, right? Their bodies were mutilated and while still alive, breathing, they were crucified. And it is said that they killed children and hung the bodies around the, the necks of their parents. Wow, this is brutal. So this was what happened to, in the time of Israel, to these people. This king had such great influence to the point even some of the leaders of Israel began to embrace the practices and it angered. There was an old priest by the name of Matthias. He was told that, you know, he was an old priest, he loved the Lord, he walks in obedience to the Lord, but they wanted him to come on the side of this king, and he refused. They said, you are a leader, um, you are honored greatly in this town, and so you, because you are such a great leader, you should be the first one to do what the king commands. And, he, and as if you do what the king commands, kind of remind me of when Yeshua was tempted by the enemy. If you do this, 
right? He said, they said to him, if you do this, you and your sons will be honored. You will be recognized. Your name will be known. You will be honored with silver and gold and many gifts. You know, it has always been the case where people of God who will stand for righteousness, they're going to be tempted beyond measure with the things that are of that which is temporal and it reminds me of abraham we read we shared that a, a while back um a little earlier when um he this king approached him after the war the king approached him and wanted to give him gifts and abraham said no i'm not gonna take your gifts i'm not gonna take anything you're offering me i will take nothing from you lest it be said you make abraham rich people of god i feel this is very important point that we need to apply to our daily lives not everybody who offer you stuff you should take from them you have to put greater value on your salvation you have to put greater value on the shed blood of the lamb that brings redemption to your life you can't give into everything that for that which is material i feel this should challenge us somehow and the question is what will you stand up for what will you stand up for are you going to compromise the things of righteousness the things that are godly are you going to be like the people who allow their hearts to be drawn far away from god's commandment because that was exactly what was happening this king was able to, to use his power, right, and his gifts and stuff to, to draw people on his side, to pull people into the path of darkness, yes, to put people, so there is like that cobweb I, I shared about, yes, so the cobweb, that spiritual cobweb, will, will keep people into that place of limitation and darkness. Are you going to be that person or are you going to help the enemy to give the enemy access are you going to give the enemy access to pollute and to desecrate your temple how did this king get into the temple to the point where he was able to set up a statue to the point where he was able to to desecrate the very altar to the point where he was able to slaughter a pig and offer it as a sacrifice on the altar to the point where he was able to pour the blood of the pig over the altar how did he get in somebody would have allowed him access somebody had to give him access to get into the temple to do that right so are you going to help the enemy are you going to give the enemy access to get in to to pollute and to desecrate your temple now which is your body i will talk about that later right or, or are you going to stand to be like the prophet elijah on mount carmel who refused to bow to baal worship he said i will not bow i am not going to bow right are you going to allow the times and seasons, especially the season we are in, to draw your hearts away into pagan practices and culture? Are you going to allow the time and seasons to cause you to lose hope in God? Are you going to allow the time and season to bring you into that place where you are surrounded by cobweb and darkness? I've noticed over time, you know, that at this time of the year, as it enters, um, this time of the year on the Gregorian calendar, the Christmas holiday, many people, many, many people lose, lose it, basically lose it. Why? For that which is material. Okay, so um, everybody else is doing it and you think you have to be a part of it. People of God, it's not true. It's not real. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy anymore. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy, I think it is about time that we begin to guard our gates, our ear gates, our eye gates, our mouth. Guard absolutely everything that can be portals to enter our lives, to enter our temple, to desecrate the temple. Be careful what you are doing and what you are entering, right? But there was, there was an old priest, right? 
the, the same priest I mentioned, he said, even if the nations that live under the rule of the king obey him and have chosen to be, obey his commandments, every one of them, even if they choose to abandon the religion of their ancestors, even if they choose to break covenant with the God of Israel, he says, I and my sons and my brothers will continue to live the covenant of our ancestors. That sounds so familiar to many who, who stood up for their faith. Yeah, it was Joshua who said, if God be God, serve. No, that was Elijah. But Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Right? He said, far be it from us to desert the law and the ordinances. Far be it from us to desert the God of our ancestors. Far be it from us to embrace another religion that is against that which God has instructed. He said, we will not obey the king's word by turning aside from our religion to fight. He said, to, to the fight, we're not doing it. We're not going to the left. We're not going to the right. We're going to stand up and we're going to believe in what was taught from the foundation, what the, uh, their ancestors came into covenant with. And it is said that when he was finished um, speaking, a man came in the sight of all the people. He was very daring. He was very brazen. And he came to offer the sacrifice. Yeah, the very sacrifice that what we're talking about. He came to, to offer the sacrifice. And the old priest, Matthias, the old priest, his heart gave way. He burned with zeal and his heart was stirred. He gave vent to righteous anger. It says he ran and he killed the man right in front of the altar. He and he and his sons escaped to the hills. Right? They fought against the army of the king. Right? This was a small group of people. Right? Coming against. This was a small group of people coming against um, the mighty king and his army. But God gave them supernatural power over evil. God gave them victory over evil. God gave them victory over evil for the, per, for the preservation of his name for the preservation of his covenant, for the preservation of his people. Do you know that throughout history, it has always been a struggle for the Jewish people? And that is why people of God, we need to understand, come to the truth of history and understand this. Somebody is always fighting. Somebody is always standing up. So, the old priest, he died shortly after the revolt, but, but his sons, they did not allow it to die with their father. They carry on the struggle. They continue to fight. They continue to defend the God of Israel. The name of that family is the Maccabean, right? And the, 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 the name Maccabean, Maccabee, um, in Hebrew means hammer. So we see God gave them a strategy to hammer their enemies. God gave them a strategy to fight, right? I remember growing up as a child, I used to hear people talk about the book of Maccabees. And I always hear it's not a good book. It's an evil book. It's not a good book to read. Yes, this book is about history. Right? It was not canonized. It is not in the regular Bible that we read. But it is good history that we need to know and understand. Because what we are seeing coming out of St. John chapter 10 here is that Yeshua, Yeshua himself was very, he was very knowledgeable about this history. Right? And so this rich history would have been passed away if it, if somebody was not there to record it and so we are tend to miss out on a lot to to understand the scripture 
because um, you know of some of the negativity of people, right? Yeshua embraced it. That's the history. And I can encourage you to go and do some research also. Go back to Daniel chapter 11 and read. So we learned that um, three years later, it was time for the rededication of the temple, right? The temple was cleansed and the daily burnt offering and the Torah religious ceremonies were resumed. We learned that the temple was, um, there was not enough oil to burn the menorah. And um, so they found a container, one little container that was supposed to, to run for last for one night, basically, right? One container that was not defiled. It had enough oil to burn the menorah for one night, right? But we learned that the menorah burned for eight days. Right? That is why I titled this session The Miracle, this eighth day miracle. It's a miracle, people of God, is a supernatural miracle. And as a result, it was decided that every year at that season, the days of dedication of the altar should be observed with gladness and joy for eight days. Why? Because the people continue to celebrate the victory that God gave them over this evil king, this cruel king who was trying to get rid of the Jewish people. So Yeshua, that was what he was celebrating. He was celebrating Hanukkah. He was celebrating with his people, right? He was celebrating with his people. But um, yes, the rich history, he, that's what he was celebrating. But as I shared ab about the background to the feast, you know, we too are warned to expect hatred and persecution in this world. As long as you are standing up as a believer, as long as you come into covenant work with the God of Israel, as long as you are determined to stand up for that which is right, to stand up for righteousness and holiness, you need to know that you will be persecuted for righteousness. You will be hate also. And we see Yeshua, he was our perfect example. He stood upon the persecution, even to the point of death, in order to honor his father. And he did not only talk about Hanukkah as we read it here. He did not only celebrate, rather. He did not only celebrate, but he warned, right, that the things that happened in the story of Hanukkah, as I shared the historical background, he said, it is going to happen again, right? So in St. Matthew chapter 24, when the disciples asked him about the signs of the time and all of these things, he says, when you see the abomination of the desolation spoken about by the prophet Daniel, chapter 11 to be exact, right? When you see the desolation, the abomination of the desolation spoken about by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, he said, let the reader understand. You need to understand that what happened then is going to happen again because there is nothing new under the sun. It's going to happen again. Well, you have to prepare yourself. You know, you, you're going to have to be willing to fight. And it does mean physical fight, right? But you're going to have to fight to, to, so that um, God's word be upheld, right? In righteousness. He said, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. In the story of, of um, the Maccabeans, Right after that old priest killed that man who bare faced, he came and entered the altar to do make up whatever sacrifice. They flee, they flee to the mountain. So Yeshua said, Um, they had, he said, What let the reader understand? Let the reader understand. Let those who are in, in Judah flee to the mountains. And you see, the disciples. 
they, they, the disciples, for the disciples to understand, they had to know about the story of Hanukkah to be aware of the times, right? So it's an eighth day celebration and I'm going to be coming back to share. I want to share further on Yeshua as the light because Hanukkah is also called the Feast of Light. Yes, and Yeshua is the light of the world. So I want to come back and I want to share on that a bit. And I also want to share on the rededication of the temple. And we're not looking at a physical temple. No, we're looking at the temple, our temple, our bodies. That is the temple of the living God. Okay. And I want to share with you some other stuff within the eight days. People of God. I pray in this season that you will not allow that which is called um, just do not, let me put it this way, do not elevate holidays above that which is holy. Amen? Do, don't do it. Learn from the Messiah. So I feel that it is about time we begin to read the Bible, the scripture with understanding. And if you are called to follow Yeshua, the Messiah, then it is about time you begin to say, would he have done this? Why did he do this? And how is it impactful to my life? Okay, so we will be back. So remember now you can go and do your research and we will be back to talk some more about Hanukkah, the feast of light. The light of the world is Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah of Israel. God bless you richly. Have a great one. Thank you for listening. And remember, join me again when we meet for the next upload. Thank you.